I'm here at the University of Reading with Deepa Senapathy to discuss her recent article in Proceedings B. Could you tell us a bit about um, this specific piece of research? This specific piece of research um, is part of what was the UK government's insect pollinator initiative. So we were one of nine projects that got funded looking at the different drivers of pollinator declines. And our particular project um, called AgriLand uh, looks at the impact that changing land use, particularly agriculture, has on pollinator declines. And my part of the project specifically looks at historical land use change and how that has an impact on pollinator declines. How is it that this research is possible now um, and hasn't been looked at previously? So um, Britain is unique in that it's got um, wonderful historic records on both flora and fauna, um, but it's also got historic land cover data. Um, this land cover data, it's the earliest land cover map of Britain that was produced in the 1920s and 1930s, but that particular map hadn't been digitised until now. This map shows you a couple of sites in Bedfordshire, so the dark green bits are woodland and the yellow bits are heathland, and um, the two sites there um, didn't undergo a lot of change. Uh, as you see, the surrounding areas around them are mostly light green, which was meadowland and grassland. Now, I'll try and load the current land cover map and you can see how things have changed. As you can see, a lot of area that was light green uh, around the site has now turned brown and the brown is actually arable. Um, so the arable expansion is quite dramatic. Um, but also, what you see, this big patch of purple is an urban expansion. That's Milton Keynes that didn't exist until the 1960s. So you can see that even though these sites themselves haven't changed that much, the woodland still exists. The surrounding area has changed, and this has an impact on the declines in species richness and composition. We picked sites where there were historic records for pollinators from the 20s and 30s, and we had about 20 sites scattered across four different counties in the UK. Um, and we went back to the sites and we resampled them. Uh, and as you can see, these are some of the bees that we picked up from our sites. And our analysis showed that three quarters of our sites showed declines, significant declines in species richness. That is the number of different species found on a site. Um, now that itself is not a surprise because we all know that pollinators are in decline. But the question that we were asking was whether these declines were being driven by changes in land use. And what our results found that yes, land use change has an impact on species richness. Um, and it is both land use within a site and outside a site at the one kilometre radius that has an impact. What we found that if a site had moved towards a more heterogeneous, more mixed habitat, then the declines were less pronounced. So for instance, if a site was originally heathland and moved into uh, a mixed heathland woodland um, change, then there were less declines in the number of species. And similarly, um, when I said changes outside of the site had an influence, um, so sites that were surrounded by arable intensification uh, did quite badly. Uh, they lost a whole lot of species. Whereas sites that had mixed habitat, it, in a surprise uh, way, if there was sort of urban expansion, those sites didn't do so badly. They lost less species. So the thing I think I'm trying to emphasize is that most of our sites lost species. It's whether how much they lost and how pronounced these losses were um, that is being sort of, it depended on land use changes in and around the site. So this is um, an aerial view of one of my field sites, Kingswood in Bedfordshire. So the site itself is woodland, as you can see there, and that hasn't changed much in 80 years. But the land around it, which used to be grassland, um, has gone totally arable. This was taken in July two years ago, and the arable lands already, the crops have flowered and have gone over. There's very little crops flowering, so there is lack of foraging resources for bees. And if you compare that with an urban environment, so this is Milton Keynes, where there's lots of gardens and parks and churchyards, 
they could provide diverse nesting and forage resources, but also over an extended period of time, which might help the bees and wasps. If you think about it, so urban environments have a lot of gardens, they have parks, they have churchyards. Um, you know, if you have avid gardeners, then their gardens are flowering from sort of early spring to late autumn. So there is a lot of diversity in what is flowering, which means there's a lot of diversity in um, what bees can forage on, but also there's diversity in nesting spaces. Um, if you sort of compare that environment to an arable environment, and if you imagine sort of a landscape filled with oilseed rape, for instance, there's, there's, a, there's an intense flowering window of two to three weeks, and then it, it sort of turns into a green desert. And, and therefore, there's not that much diversity. And, and this is why I think that urban environments may, well, they're not losing as many species as arable environments. So why is it that these um, pollinators, specifically bees and wasps, are so important in Britain? Bees and wasps, um, they play a very important role in pollination of things like apples, like um, soft fruits like strawberries, um, oilseed rape, and um, the pollination services they provide have an impact on yield and quality of the food crops that they produce. So any impact on them, any losses in the number and richness of pollinators will have a knock-on impact on food security. Do you think that um, the declines that we've seen over the last um, 30, 40, 50 years are likely to continue or are we now putting measures in place to try to prevent a continued decline? Um, there is evidence to suggest that the declines are slowing down um, and uh, the government, both nationally and on a European level, have taken notice about these declines and they're, and they're trying to bring in land management practices that would help sort of slow down and, and hopefully in the future stop these declines. A lot of it comes down to sort of biodiversity friendly farming, sort of having flower rich field margins, for instance, or reducing the intensity of hedgerow cutting. In short, providing pollinators with foraging and nesting resources that will then attract them enough into these fields so they can pollinate the crops that we grow. How can your research be used to um, inform policies and practice? Um, I think our research is quite timely in that um, the current uh, common agricultural policy reform is um, ongoing um, and there is a new national environmental land management strategy that the government's bringing into place. So, our research showing that diverse mixed habitats could help um, enhance pollinator richness, I think is quite timely uh, in terms of land use reform, in terms of policy, and, and could be adopted by policymakers to, to kind of uh, put in place regulations that could help biodiversity.